Where you live in Canada, of course, will influence where you can and can't smoke and how to get your cannabis. The provinces are taking the first steps in this new reality, implementing rules based on the federal law. So how effective will their rollouts be? Let's ask a few people who know a thing or two about running a province. It's the legal cannabis edition of the Premier's League. Joining me now, Christy Clark, BC Premier from 2011 to 2017 and now Senior Advisor with Bennett Jones. She joins us from Vancouver. Here in studio, Robert Giz, Premier of Prince Edward Island from 2007 to 2015, now President and CEO of the Canadian Wireless Telecommunications Association. Hi to both of you. Great to see you again. Hi, uh, Mr. Giz, I'll start with you because you're right here. The day has arrived. Legal weed is here. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think overall it's a good thing. Uh, if you look, uh, what uh, the government's trying to do is take uh, a substance uh, off the streets, uh, out of an unregulated market, away from the criminals, regulate it, uh, try to control it a little bit, um, and hopefully take some of that revenue uh, that's going to come into the federal government and the provinces uh, and use it for good, whether or not it's uh, around uh, mental health issues, health care issues, education issues, law enforcement. So I think that you know, I don't think there's a lot of new people today that are just showing up at these stores and buying marijuana. I think there's a bit of a euphoria today with it. Uh, and you'll see it evolve uh, over the next couple of months and years. Ms. Clark, what do you think? I'm a little more mixed about it, um, I would say, than Rob is. I think, you know, having the government's imprimatur on these, uh, on danger, you know, on, on narcotics or drugs, um, alcohol, I think it, it offers permission for more people to do it, so I think it's probably true. You will see use go up um, e among young people, and I think that you know when we start seeing the marketing, and I know it's limited, but people are going to feel it from the big money and marijuana companies. I think that's also going to drive new users coming into the system. But I do agree with Rob completely on this. Whether it's good or bad, it's necessary. We lost the war on marijuana. And you know we lost the police lost that war, and so really it's a matter I think of surrender to the current reality. Recognize that it, kids are getting it and people are getting it from criminals, and we should put this back into that. We should put this into the hands of people who can be who are willing to be regulated and going to supply a safer substance for people. That's an interesting point, Mr. Giz, because you know for so long the debate is over whether or not to do it. Okay, it's happened now. So as we do look forward, what do you view as the biggest risk facing the you know grand social experiment, as I think the New York Times called it? Well, I think we're going to see, uh, as Christy mentioned, uh, an uptick in usage. Uh, some people not knowing how to use uh, the drug. I know there are some uh, educational components to it to uh, advise people on how to do it. But I think we're going to see, uh, for example, some upticks uh, in emergency departments. Uh, we saw that in Colorado, where there was a lot of increases right off the beginning, right from the beginning. But I think it will also give us a chance to now that it's going to be regulated, if we can monitor it and use that evidence-based research to perhaps be able to target educational campaigns to make sure that people are better prepared for it or educate them to not use it at all. So, uh, you know, there are going to be some positives with the negatives, uh, but I think that it's past due. Uh, as Christy said, we have lost uh, the battle on, on marijuana, and I think that we're probably, in the long run, uh, going to be better off uh, with this system. Let me pose the same question to you, Ms. Clark. What do you view as the biggest risk going forward? Well, I think I think um, an uptick in usage is the biggest problem, and I, I do really think that making it available to kids under 25, and I, you know, I don't know that there was much of an alternative, and I know Quebec's choosing 21, British Columbia's choosing 19, so there's a little bit of variance there across the country, but there is so much evidence that tells us that young people, because their brains are developing till they're 25, shouldn't be using it at least until after that. So I think we, you know, I, I am concerned about that group of people. I'm concerned about more people using it while they're driving. I think we should be, you know, it's, we've got a big enough problem with alcohol out there killing people on the roads. Um, and I, you know, I also, I think that some of the laws that have been designed across the country are some, things that we should think harder about. I think it's a big mistake to provide marijuana or to sell marijuana in liquor stores. You shouldn't have two inebriates in the same place. No one else has done that in North America. And um, I know the public sector unions want it, and I know they make big donations to political parties across the country, but I don't think we should put that ahead of people's health, and I think that's what's at risk there. You're nodding. 
Yeah, I, I am. I, you know, I know in my home province of Prince Edward Island, uh, it is the Liquor Commission through a subsidiary that's now Cannabis Prince Edward Island that's running it, and they actually have separate stores. Uh, yeah. So I think that it is important to have separate stores, but I do think that there is different models all across the country today, uh, and this is something new. So like any new major program that comes forward, there's gonna be uh, an evolution of it uh, as we move forward. And I think that we can use some of the research to figure out should it be sold with liquor? As Christy mentioned, probably shouldn't be sold with liquor. How much should we regulate? What should the age mm -hmm. be? Um, but I don't think we're gonna you know, necessarily uh, be able to stop people in that 18 to 25 category. That's when they go to university. That's when they're likely to experiment. Um, but I think that if we can make sure that they're now gonna ha actually have a safe product, because before it wasn't regulated. So, you know, who was growing it? How was it being grown? Uh, we didn't know. Uh, so at least now, uh, we may be able to educate our young people a little bit more and be able to promote that, find out when it's not the, the optimal time to use it uh, and try to promote them to uh, abstain for as long as possible. Ms. Clark, I want to get your reaction to the government's announcement here in Ottawa today around pardons, essentially making it uh, easier and cheaper so it'll take less time and it won't cost anything to apply for a pardon in minor possession cases. The critics here are saying, you know, that's not that doesn't go far enough because when you go to the border, you're still going to get hung up for it. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't know what the Canadian government's going to do to try and tell the American government these days that they should change their laws about who's allowed in. I mean, that's, uh, you know, it's a, it, it's a good thing, I think, um, for people to be pardoned for these minor offenses well after the fact. I mean, it shouldn't, but it shouldn't hold you back in terms of declarations on your criminal record check, if you want to hold a liquor license and some of those other things that are really purely just Canadian. But the critics are right. It's, it's, it's this pardon really only assists, helps people in Canada, not if you're traveling um, for sure, because that remains on your record, but that's still something. I mean, it is still something that if you are pardoned and it, you're applying for something that requires a criminal record check, you don't have to declare it. And I think that is, it, you know, given the direction the government's taken on this, I think it's the right move to make. Okay, let me ask you both, and I'll start with you, Mr. Giz. Put, you know, you've been in obviously a position of leadership. If you're the prime minister, if you're the in that position right now, what is the political calculation going forward? And do you think this will matter to voters in the election? It's a, a good question. Uh, with any major public policy issues, there's always positive and negatives. Today seems to be quite positive. Uh, I'm sure over the coming days, there's going to be negatives that are going to arise, where there's going to be distribution problems or there's going to be a health care scare that's going to happen. Uh, so, but I think overall, if the government sticks to its lines, which is that we're taking it out of the criminal world, we're regulating it, we're now taxing it so that we can take those dollars and put them into areas that can help uh, deter uh, marijuana use or, or, or other drug use. So I think that there are positives that can be spun, but I think today is probably a good day. I do not think long term, you know, if I was still a provincial premier, was this something that was on my radar day after day? No, it wasn't. Was it something that got raised every once in a while? Yes. Uh, I don't think it's going to make or break any political party. I don't think you're going to have a political party that's going to try and reverse it um, now that it's all operating like this. So I think that it's, uh, it, it could turn out to be a wash. There will be some people that will ha be happy and some that, that won't. Final word to you, Ms. Clark. What do you think the political calculation is? Well, I think it's really mixed. I think that um, when, the, when, the, when Prime Minister Trudeau announced this it, during his election campaign, it was a definitional thing for him. It was, hey, we're going to be different. We're going to be young. We're going to be new. And we're going to sweep away all these old, dumb ideas. And um, <laughs> people like that about him. I'm, but I know, you know, as you're Prime Minister for a while, people expect, you know, you start to have to take a different tone. And he has. You notice that he's talking a lot more about law and order. He's talking a lot more about protecting kids, which didn't really come up when he first talked about this in the election campaign. And I think what he sees is what the polling shows everyone, which is this is very unpopular in the South Asian community. It is very unpopular in the Chinese Canadian uh, community. Um, and so and those that's a significant number of voters in suburban riding. So from a purely strategic perspective, maybe not a net win this time as much as it was last time. Okay, I will leave it there. Thank you so much to Christy Clark and Robert Giz. Appreciate your time. Thanks. My Bye. pleasure.